Now we're going to take what we've learned about the normal curve and we're going to apply it to a couple different problems. So suppose x is a normal random variable with a mean mu equal to 55. Use the given normal distribution to answer the following. Note that you have not been given enough information to do this with a calculator on your own. What I mean by that is something like from, um, as in from section 7.2, which I know we haven't done yet, but we will be doing it. So when you do learn those methods, you still would not be able to apply them to this problem. All right, so let's look here. I have a curve drawn. You can see this is a normal curve. It says that the mean is 55. Then I have this little bit of area here from 55 to 62, and it tells us that that area is 0.2123. Now letter A here originally had a typo. It said 50, but it should say 55. I want the probability that X is greater than 55. Well, that's half the curve. Because 55 is the mean, and this entire area under the whole curve is 1, 55 is the halfway point. So the area on the right-hand side of 55 would be 0 0.5. It would be half. All right, now what about from 55 to 62? Well, that would be 0.2123. That's the area that was actually given to us in the problem. Now notice that it actually doesn't matter whether you have less than or less than or equal to, because equal to, of course, has no area. The lines that you've drawn and shaded there have no area, so they don't count, believe it or not. It all comes back to the same thing we learned about with the cable repair person back oh, several pages ago, that every any particular line has a probability of zero. So it doesn't matter whether you include the line or not include the line. That's why it doesn't matter whether I say less than or less than or equal to, it doesn't make any difference because the probability won't change because the equal to line has no area to it. And that's what I just typed up right there. It doesn't matter if you use less than or less than or equal to, it doesn't make any difference because the lines themselves at 55, 62, whatever, have no area and thus no probability to contribute to the problem. All right, now let's get crafty. What about the probability that X is greater than 62? Well, greater than 62 is this white region over here on the right-hand side. Now, remember, you know that 55 all the way to the end is 0.5. Then you know this little gray region right here is 0.2123. So doesn't it make sense that the right-hand region over here is 0.5 take away 0.2123? So write that out. And it'd be 0 0.5 take away 0.2123 which would be equal to, and this you do need a calculator for possibly, 0 0.2877. And there you have it. Oops, I pressed the wrong thing. There we go. Just using a simple geometry argument. Half the curve is 0 0.5. Half the curve, take away that gray shaded region, is 0.2877. All right, now what about 48 to 55? Ooh, tricky. Let me, let me put in 48, one second. There we go, I put 48 in right over here. Now notice, I didn't do this for no reason. 55 to 62 is seven away, right? And then 48 to 55 is also seven away. Let me prove it to you. That's why I picked the number 48 in the first place for this problem. So that distance over there on the left and the distance over there on the right are exactly the same. And 55, if you recall, is the middle line of this graph. So 48 to 55 should be the exact same distance as 55 to 62, namely 2, 1, 2, 3, because of symmetry on the curve. Oops, as the given shaded area. You're just using a little bit of geometry to kind of figure this out, right? And, oh, it might help if you noticed. Note, right, 62 take away 55 is 7, and then 55 take away 48 is 7. They're the same distance away, and that's why the symmetry argument works. All right, now what about less than 48? Well, we just figured out that between 48 and 55 is 0.2123 over here on the left. So less than that would be identical to this area we found up here over on the right. That would be 
0.5, take away 0.2123, and it'd be the same as the area we already found, 0.2877. Let me make that argument one more time. So remember this 48 to 55 region, you can't see it, but it's there. The 48 to 55 region is 0.2123. And the whole half from 55 over to the left is 0.5. So if you take 0.5 and you take away 0.2123, you're going to have an, an area in the left tail identical to this area in the right tail, which is 0.2877. Now, what about the probability that x is less than 48 or greater than 62? Well, that would be that hypothetical left-hand tail and the hypothetical right-hand tail we can see right here but we've already found each of those tails. So you just add them up. You take 0.2877 plus another 0.2877 and you'd have it. Right? So this is 0 0.2877 plus 0 0.2877. This would be 2 times 0 0.2877 which is 0.5754. And there we have it. All figured out with just logic and symmetry. Lovely. Now let's do just one more example before we go over and try to figure out how to find these probabilities another way, which is 72. But before we get into that, let's explain what we're seeing when we look at a normal curve just a little bit more. So when we interpret the area under a normal curve, you can think of it a couple ways. You can think of it as the proportion of the entire population that has that characteristic, or you can think of it as the probability that a single randomly selected individual from the population will have that characteristic. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. One is considering it as a proportion of the population. One is considering it a probability of an individual. All right. So let's assume that the giraffes, I mean, the distribution of giraffe weights are normally distributed with a mean of mu equals to 2,200 pounds and a sigma of equal to 200 pounds. So a mean of 2,200 excuse me, pounds and a sigma of 200 pounds. We're going to draw a normal curve with the parameters labeled. Okay, so let me draw that normal curve for you. And actually, I'm going to shade, I'm going to do it automatically, shading the area that weighs less than 2,100 pounds. So let me get that for you. There we have it. So I have a normal curve with the parameters labeled, 2200 is in the middle, then I have my standard deviations marked off evenly spaced, right? So you want even spacing all along, and you keep adding 200 to get to these numbers, 2400, 2600, 2800, then you subtract away 200, 200, right? And get all the other numbers. You get a few standard deviations in there. Then I have this line here at 2100, which is the exact halfway point between 2000 and 2200. And then for some reason, I happen to know that that area is 0 0.3085. We always, when we draw these curves, put the areas up on top and the X values down below, like the 2100 pounds. Then I just made it a little bit more obvious where the tick marks are right there. Now suppose for some reason that I know that the area that I shaded is the 0 0.3085. Obviously, we don't know how to do that yet, but that's what Section 7.2 will be all about. We'll figure that out later. But for right now, we know that this area is 0.3085, so there's two ways to interpret that. You can think of it as a proportion of all giraffes, namely 30.85% of all giraffes weigh less than 2,100 pounds. Great. Or you could think of it as the chances of a single randomly selected giraffe weighing less than 2,100 pounds is 0.3085. So that's one giraffe selected out of many. Two different ways to think about it. They're both okay. One is thinking about it as terms of a proportion of all giraffes, and one is thinking about it as one giraffe selected out of many. Of course, I forgot to mention, but I'll say it now, this curve that we've seen, bef we've seen this before, couple times, but um, it's coming back to haunt us in a big way. You want to make sure you draw it nice and normally distributed, nice bell curve. You want to make sure you have the asymptotes there. You want to make sure you've marked your mean. If you have to draw your standard deviations, make sure that they're nice and evenly spaced. All right, now 
If this is the case, and we know that the proportion that weigh less than 2,100 pounds is 0 0.3085, that would be the probability, or 30.85%, there's a proportion. What proportion weighs more than 2,100? Well, remember the entire curve makes 1. So if you just take 1 minus 0 0.3085, you'll have 69.15%. And there you have that. Now, what about the probability of weighing exactly 2,100 pounds? That, that black line, vertical line right there. And the answer is, it's a trick question. Zero. Because a line cannot, does not have an area. Therefore, on a continuous distribution, which this is, the probability of an exact value will always be zero. All right, we're all done with section 7.1. I'll see you back here in 7.2 when we're going to learn how to find that 30.85% for ourselves with the lovely, lovely calculator that we paid good money for. See you then.